Hello everybody. Shalom. In this video, I just wanted to talk about the two comings of Messiah. And in order to do that, I just wanted to, well, bring up this quote, heaven is a state of mind, not a location. And of course, there's my video on the lake of fire that I believe everybody's going through currently. And that is purification. So we get purified through the lake of fire like a baptism, baptism by fire. And when we can become purified, like gold tried in the fire, we can enter heaven. The kingdom of heaven is inside of you, in your mind. And that is what I've learned in the past few years. In 2015, I was a lukewarm Christian. I thought I was clothed, but Jesus says you think you're clothed, but you're actually naked. And how true it is. And so I went through my deliverance. And I got rid of the demons. And I knew that if I sinned again, the demons would come back. And so I didn't do that. I leaned on our Father's Holy Spirit to get me through every single temptation. And it's been a constant state of purification for the past few years and the first thing that happens when you repent is the adversary wants to drag you back down into hell and you may go there and people freak out as soon as they learn about the deception in this world and they get so upset and angry and they just sort of fall down into this state of wrath and fear. Like those who think that they're slaves to the demiurge of this world. The truthers are really being led down into a hell of their own making in their mind. And I know I was there 2015 when I started looking into truther videos. They had me afraid. Afraid that... We're going to go through the tribulation, and it's going to be this horrible, horrible thing, and they're going to take us into FEMA camps, and this and that, and they really market fear. The media is big on fear right now. Fear and getting you angry, wrath, unforgiveness. That's what people are going through right now, and that's hell. This world is hell on earth in their, their minds for them. But I had faith. I thought, if I'm going to go through the tribulation, seven years, then, you know, I might not have food. But I was like, well, Father will give me manna. And I just had faith. And, and then I realized that there was nothing to fear. And Father dragged me up out of that, out of that hell of our own making. You know, Christian truthers were really sort of egging each other on into being afraid, and people still are doing that. We're making ourselves, in general, a hell of our own making. And so I stopped. I'm specifically trying to focus on the positive now, and trying to share Things that will lead people to getting healthier and happier and enjoying life again because heaven is in our minds. And so the kingdom of heaven is available. The doors are wide open. But you need to get to agape love like I talked about in that other video. The truth is hidden under a curtain of love. And if you're not in that state of love, if you're stuck in a state of fear and anger and unforgiveness, you're not loving your neighbor, you're not granting them mercy. And I'm talking about the people who are hating on the vaccine pushers and the people that are hating on chemtrailers and the people that are hating on the Illuminati. And if you're hating on the devil worshipers and the abortionists and all this stuff, if you're hating on these people specifically, you're still in a state of unforgiveness. And so it's still a hell of your own making because if you don't forgive them, then you can't be forgiven. That's what Jesus or Yehoshua said. 
And so the main step, the first step is forgive everybody, including yourself, including God, if you're holding a grudge against him, including these people like NASA, everybody that you're holding a grudge against, it has to go. You have to grant mercy. That's what Yahweh wants. He doesn't want bulls and rams and goats. He wants us to grant mercy and love one another as ourselves. Agape love is the fulfillment of the law. And when you can get to agape love, then you can enter into the kingdom of heaven in your mind. So let's get into the two comings of Messiah. According to the Clementine scriptures, this is the first chapter about the two comings of Messiah. I'll leave the link below to this PDF. This is page 44. His coming, therefore, was predicted by Moses, or Moshe, who delivered Torah, or the commandments, of Yahweh to men, but by another also before him, as I have already informed you. He therefore intimated that he should come, humble indeed in his first coming, but glorious in his second. And the first indeed has been already accomplished, since he has come and taught. And he is the judge of all, has been judged and slain. But at his second coming he will come to judge, and will indeed condemn the immoral, but will take the obedient into a share and association with himself in his Malkuth, or kingdom. So I just want to interject John twelve forty seven. He says that he did not come to judge the world, but to save the world, of course. That's another verse. But continuing on in 47, As for anyone who hears my words, his doctrine was not his own, it was his father's, and does not keep them, I do not judge him, for I have not come to judge the world, but to save the world. There is a judge for the one who rejects me and does not receive my words or doctrine. The word that I have spoken will judge him on the last day. He says, my doctrine is not my own, it's the Father who's working in me. The doctrine that he taught, the words that he spoke were not his words, they were the Father's words. The Father judges people through a man he has appointed, the Messiah. So, when he's coming to judge the people, it's not really him that's being the one who's judging. It's the word that he spoke, the doctrine, the commandments, the Torah. That is what judges people. So, at his second coming, he will come to judge and will indeed condemn the immoral, but will take the obedient into a share and association with himself in his kingdom. How do we get judged? Like I said, the lake of fire. If you haven't seen my video on the lake of fire, please see that video. Basically, we're going through that purification process. Those who are rejecting the word that's being spoken, they are just continuing on in the lake of fire, unrepentant. And they're being judged. And everything they're doing is coming right back at them. And those who are keeping the commandments, they're getting purified and they're becoming gold, tried in the fire. And they are coming through into the kingdom. Continuing on here. Now the faith of his second coming depends upon his first. For the prophets, especially Jacob and Moses, spoke of the first, but some also of the second. But the excellency of prophecy is chiefly shown in this, that the prophets spoke not of things to come according to the sequence of things, Otherwise, they might seem merely as wise men to have conjectured what the sequence of things pointed out. This is being spoken in front of Caiaphas, the high priest. And Gamaliel was speaking, but I'm just going to start with this chapter, The Rule of Faith. These sayings of Gamaliel did not much please Caiaphas. And holding him in suspicion, as it seemed, he began to insinuate himself cunningly into the discussions, for smiling at what Gamaliel had said, the chief of the Kohanim asked of Jacob, uh, or James the Just, the chief Mavakar, that the discourse concerning Mashiach should not be drawn but from the scriptures, that we may know, he, said he, whether Yeshua be the very Messiah or no. And then said James the Just, we must first inquire from what scriptures we are especially to derive our discussion. 
Then he, that's Caiaphas, with difficulty at length overcome by reason, answered that it must be derived from Torah. And afterwards he made mention also of the prophets. So Caiaphas is saying that if we're going to prove that Jesus was the Messiah, it has to come from the Torah and also the prophets, the Navaim. Continuing on. To him, our James the Just, or Jacob, began to show that whatsoever things the prophets say, they have taken from Torah, the commandments of Yahweh. And what they have spoken is in accordance with Torah. He also made some statements respecting the scrolls of the kings, in what way and when and by whom they were written, and how they ought to be used. And when he had discussed most fully concerning Torah, and had, by a most clear exposition, brought into light whatever things are in it concerning Mashiach, he showed by most abundant proofs that Yeshua is the Mashiach, and that in him are fulfilled all the prophecies that related to his humble coming. For he showed that two comings of him are foretold, one in humiliation, which he has accomplished, the other in glory, which is hoped for to be accomplished, when he will come to give the kingdom to those who believe in him and who observe all things that he has commanded. And when he had plainly taught the people concerning these things, he added this also, that unless a man be immersed in water in the name of Yeshua, as Yeshua taught, he can neither receive remission of sins nor enter into the heavenly kingdom. And he declared that this is the prescription of the unbegotten God, to which he added this also, do not think that we speak of two unbegotten Elohim, or that one is divided into two, or that the same is made male and female, but we speak of the only begotten Son of Yahweh, not sprung from another source, but born from Yahweh's bosom, and in like manner we speak of the Ruach. But when he had spoken some things also concerning Mikvah, through seven successive days he persuaded all the people and the high priest that they should hasten straight away to receive Mikvah or baptism. So it's uh, saying first that the only begotten son sprung from the Ruach, that's from the spirit of Yahweh, and that he's not, you know, the only begotten son is not Yahweh who's unbegotten. So they're explaining it's he's different. He's not Yahweh. Uh, he was Yahweh's son, not Yahweh. And they spoke for seven days and he actually convinced Caiaphas, the high priest, that he should straight, in, straight away receive a baptism. And then, of course, uh, Shaul, or Paul, comes and ruins it all. But I'll leave the link below for this PDF if you want to research that. So I just wanted to discuss the two kingdoms. And I believe that Messiah is coming in spirit for his bride. And the supposed rapture probably already happened in September of last year. And that we are waking up and those who are being judged right now in the lake of fire and they're letting it purify them, they're going to be entering into the heavenly kingdom on earth. And those who reject the conviction of the Holy Spirit are going to be put into more and more um, correction problems however you want to see it. Um, and that's just, they're just going to be in the lake of fire, uh, unrepentant until they repent. And of course, if things just keep getting worse and worse and worse, finally somebody's going to hit rock bottom and then they're going to cry out for Yahweh and then they'll be saved. And I do believe everybody will get saved. So you can see my other videos on that. I'll leave the link below, but I want this to be a short video on the two comings of Messiah. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for listening. Shalom. Chris White once coined the phrase short-term New World Order Freakout Syndrome to explain what it's like to have your perception of the world shattered. Of course, it's not just about the shape of the world, whether it's flat, round, or something else entirely. This New World Order Freakout often includes now saying no to GMOs, fluoride, vaccines, and pharmaceuticals. It's a complete overhaul to your lifestyle. And trying to explain that mainstream media is just propaganda to promote false flags, division, and more can really put a strain on your relationships. Have you gotten tired of being mocked by your own family for what you share? We've all been there. Are you treated like the black sheep because of the commandments you keep? I get it. 
We're all trying to figure things out together, but sometimes you just have to let your family and friends be. Plant the seed and wait and see. But while you wait for them to catch up, do you wish you had someone to talk with who gets it? That's what Truth or Talk is for. Being able to discuss what's going on in your life and what you're interested in without feeling like you're going to be judged as a crazy conspiracy theorist who should be on drugs or committed. No subject is taboo, and I'd love to hear from you. Simply truthertalk.com. Simply make an appointment, and let's talk, truther.